So we're in a strange place right now, but I figured this would be the best way to show off the new Wu Audio Tube Mini. Um, see that? It, the blue thing that's sticking out of my USB? Looks like a giant USB key. Yeah, that's a new Wu Tube Amp. And not like a new tube, like a little thing. That is a tube amp. And it runs off of USB power. And I kid you not, he has told me that when you plug it into a PC and not using the wires to go off a phone, because there is like, there's this wire that gives you USB-C, and I think he'll sell one in the future that does lightning, because you can't just use normal ones. It's got to have specifically for Woo. Um, when you use these wires off of like a portable device, it's powerful. When you use it off of a laptop or a big full-size computer, he says that'll run Susvara. And my brain just like, I kind of doesn't, doesn't make any sense. I'm currently um, using it up here. I'm, I'm doing my tuning and modifications uh, for an upcoming collab, Harmonic Dyne, the Eris. And I needed like a vari variety of amplifiers to use to, to tune with. So I brought the Drop THX AAA1, very linear, very neutral, kind of boring sounding. I have two of those, which is great for going back and forth between two tunings. And then it was time to get like more exciting, like another type of portable, a Shanling. And I have the, the big Hyphen EF600s here, review coming soon, or maybe it's out already. I don't know how the world works. But I'm like, I need to bring up a tube amp. And not a tube hybrid, not a TA26. I need to bring up a tube amp. And I've been using this for a week and a half. And that's enough tube amp to say I have a tube amp. I'm gonna unplug it from the computer uh, because we gotta look at it. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch from, all right, the, here's the thing. When you miniaturize a tube amp, which is what Woo Audio has done, you, uh, you have a few problems with that. Or it's more, um, do you like how the sun works? I'm not sure how the sun is working out. This video might be completely ruined. There are your tubes. Military grade surplus tubes that are inside of there. Glass windows to see through. I believe there's several different colors. He was like, is okay with blue? And I'm like, hell yes, please. Anything but black and silver. Silver and black and silver black and black and silver and black, please. Blue. Thank you, Jack Wu. Um, Unplug my headphones, tour of the unit, logo carved in, window, beautiful, hope it's shining the light right in the lens. It says tube mini in the absolute worst font I've ever seen. You've got a little LED indicator here. You flip it over to the back side. You see I have a lot of marks because I've been using Bluetac um, for this a lot. Because the first thing Jack Wu told me, because it was, um, we had a phone conversation, he's like, look, you can't treat this like some portable thing that you could just strap to your phone. So the first thing I did was I took Bluetac and I strapped this to my phone and used it like a portable thing. And it works. The problem is you're carrying around a tube amp. A tube amp. Not a, not a portable amp that is like just happens to have tubes. This is a pocket-sized tube amp. Pocket-sized, palm-sized, I guess palm-sized. Full-size USB, which I personally would have made this a USB-C female and then just made little adapter wires for it. But we're going full size, and that means when I plug it in, it sticks out quite a bit, which is why I had a wad of blue tack to sort of level it with the table. Otherwise, I would feel bad about going and that, that. So that's an issue. Um, he does provide, you can ask for, I, I asked for the both wires. I think you could order these separately. This one is, it says DAC, and it is just a female full size that goes to USB-C. My problem with this is it doesn't seat all the way and it's very weak. Weak to the point where this fell out. I had this on my phone, I was carrying around my hand and then it, it leaned down and there was no headphone in it and it just a little bit and it slammed on the floor. No damage to the tubes. So that's how I'm doing testing here in z Reviews, accidentally dropping things on the floor. So that's fine. I didn't finish the tour of the unit. I was, still, I was talking about this and I was getting onto it. So yeah, he also has this, which is, I, I, you know what? It's a USB-A to USB-C female, what the unit should have. And I assume you're supposed to plug this into this, and then you have essentially just a USB extension. So, um, 
All right, back to the tour of the unit. That I would reconsider. I feel like something this big and as expensive as it is, please click the link in the description to find out how expensive it is. I'm assuming this is gonna come out to under, because I I, mess, I texted him. I could text Jack, oh, can you do that? I texted him, so like, you know, I went through all the emails and I don't see the price, MSRP, what it's gonna launch at. So if I had to guess, because I like doing this, if I'm wrong in the high end and it's like, oh, it's cost more than I said, then that's one way to just figure it out with Zeos. If it costs less, um, I'm saying $600 would be probably acceptable for this. You don't put out a portable tube amp or a transportable tube amp and have it push Sasvara. It's a little bit scary with IEMs. I had a couple IEMs out here. It'll still work, but you gotta be cautious. I'm getting ahead of myself. Back to the uh, unit tour. USB, U uh, LED, text, window, logo. You get your single-ended and balanced outputs on the top. Uh, this side has a button that is play pause. It has a single-ended or balanced switch for the output. The other side has a positive and negative button. Procedure is as follows, and it's important you know this. When you plug a headphone into this, I recommend highly you plug it in before this has power. Because if you are running this unit and then pop that in there and you happen to have the switch on the actual thing you're plugging in, your headphones will ring like beep for 45 seconds. It becomes a tinnitus, uh, a tinnitus simulator. What the actual procedure is when you're plugging in something, if this is running and hot and ready to go, if you're gonna plug in a balanced end, you switch this switch to single-ended, you can then plug it in, you then wait 30 seconds and then switch it to balanced. That's the official procedure for this. Because, you ever tap a tube? If, you, if you're a tube amp person, I could let you know that you know what I'm talking about. If you're not a tube amp person, by the way, I'm gonna keep moving the table so that we're in the sunlight the entire time until I crash into those boxes. If you're not a tube amp person, here's the thing about tubes. They're an alive thing. They're like a light bulb. They sit there, there's a vacuum inside, they're vacuum tubes, there's no air, they have current running through them, they do magic. I don't know, I can't describe what tubes actually do. Um, and if you tap them, you hear the ping, you hear the things inside ringing. No different with this. When I had this in the back of my phone, illegally I might add, I'm not supposed to do that, it was fine. As long as I was holding it in my hand, it was fine. He also recommends if you're gonna try to hook this up to a portable device, preferably it be not your main cell phone because this will pick up on every little tiny signal interference. You ever hear of EMI? You, do you, I anybody remember like 2005? I remember 2005. Remember putting your cell phone down next to anything that produced audio and you would just hear Take that, times it by four, and put it in this device. I had it on my cell phone, and I plugged it in, and it was fine. Right to the point where someone text messaged me. And then it was like, eh, 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 and just, just, just screaming all the interference. So ideally, what I would do is I would get a DAP that I'm not using, or that I'm like, you know what, I like this DAP. It doesn't need to have Wi-Fi on, it doesn't need to have Bluetooth on, it has no, no LTE service or anything. And I'll just plug it in with the USB cable. And now this DAP that is a dead unit will just send signal via the USB. Perfect use case. If you wanna add tube sound to a DAP, this is ideal. Um, using it with a phone, not so much, and using it with my laptop here, my laptop being wi on Wi-Fi right now, I can still hear something. It's not as bad as my cell phone when I got a message on something and I was trying to record a message and upload it, it was like, oh my God. Also, I was using this in a car, I was being driven somewhere, and I'm like, I'm gonna try to just use this in the car. And I had two other people with cell phones, and I think as I was driving into more and more crowded areas, like it was just picking up all the, it is an electron magnet, but not an electron magnet. So the procedure is as follows, you know, you plug it in, you wanna to switch to another input, okay, uh, you, can you can unplug this. I would also recommend you switch it before unplugging because a lot of th this and like that, that click, that's violence in its, in its eyes. I could probably actually demonstrate the sound of the ringing. 
trust me on it. Um, I wish this switch was a little bit bigger, considering you have to go through that procedure to plug something into it. If you're gonna do this switch every time you do that, I would like it to be like a thumbable switch, and it's a slightly recessed little boy right there. So I would switch it to single-ended. Um, I'm gonna use the wire with the wire on the wire so we can plug this into the wire on the laptop while we're wiring. You get what I'm saying, right? Cool. I wanna point out also that since I had this plugged directly into my laptop, which probably isn't recommended, they'd probably recommend you do the wire, it was wide enough here that it was covering my second USB port and preventing me from using it. You plug it in, you get those two LEDs in the side of the tubes. The tubes don't actually light up bright enough to see. At least I've not noticed them lighting up bright enough to see, but you get the two indicators, which you can see from both sides. And that's it, it's on. And it's just like a tube, it takes a little bit to warm up. You can wait a minute, wait two minutes. We are currently on single-ended. I'm gonna plug my Aris into it. No sound. This thing is probably freaking out because the sound device disappeared and now is reappearing. Is it playing? I can't tell if it's playing. Malware Bytes is telling me to pay for it or something. I don't know, no. I don't care about your summer sale, Malware Bytes. Go away, ugly gorilla. Um, yeah, I wish this had a little bit more, it just wiggles a bit. That's my one concern about Bill is just that. So let's put my headphones on. Uh, first thing we gotta do, because this is so powerful, an amplifier, God, the sun is like, just, just booking it across the sky. Because this is such a powerful amplifier, you have to make sure you lower the volume on whatever your source is. If you're just using Windows volume, just lower your Windows volume. And if you're using FUBAR, honestly, lower your Windows volume. Because if you lower your Windows volume, you're guaranteed that whatever, I don't know, AOL Instant Messenger, Netscape Navigator, I'm trying to think of really old, Norton Antivirus, none of those things pop up an alert that goes, bing, at 100%. So I've got, I'm currently not doing that because I'm a, a little dangerously, and I'm running 26 decibels down on FUBAR, which it says it's playing uh, Ludwig Gorenson. I may have to change. I may have to restart things because I unplugged the DAC mid-play and it's, it's not happy with it. Wait. Okay, now we're playing. So what I'm gonna do, this has been sitting for long enough. You don't have to like be super gentle with it. It's still like military grade tube. So I'm gonna switch this. Place it down on the table. So that's 26 dB down. Now, I'm gonna really quickly go over the sound because I should hark on the sound for 40 minutes. I recently bought a balanced cable. Where the hell is it? Oh, they're over there. Come on, I'm gonna take a walk. Welcome to my kitchen in a, in a state of disaster. I bought a tiger tank. I bought a giant tiger tank. Um, I recently bought a balanced cable on Amazon, which I will link for my cost KPH40s. Uh, it's for just, I think it's a five series Sennheiser and it just plugs right in to the thing with no adapters. It goes boom into boom. And then it's, it's really long, it's exceptionally long, which is not the greatest thing ever when you're trying to use a very lightweight headphone. It also has wood on the connector. And I could tell you very much this. I've never heard KPH 40s sound this good. And KPH 40s were never really like a headphone that changed a lot with tubes. But what I have noticed is KPH 40s scale. So if you're not a believer in the KPH 40 lifestyle, I'm switching off of balanced to unplug that. I'm throwing my new collab, which is almost done being tuned, um, down. I'm gonna plug this back in. I just heard pop, pop, pop. Even though I'm not set to the right thing, it went popped left, popped right, and now a slight ring, and now it's silent because I haven't switched it back. So now I'm gonna switch it back. Do you hear? That's the ringing. That's the ringing we're talking about. You're supposed to plug it in and wait. 30, 
minimum of 20 seconds for that ringing if it's low. When you first plug it in, if it goes and it shakes the tubes, you could have up to 45 seconds or 60 seconds of ringing. This is an amplifier that you, actually it's an amplifier and DAC. It's a DAC and amplifier. The sun is already, we're running out of space, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. This is an amplifier. I broke the headphones just now. I felt it when I did that. That you need to take special care with. You have to basically know what you're doing. You have to be watching this video and taking notes. It's got 97 twists in it. There we go. We put these on, which these are modified with Dakoni pads with holes punched in them with a hole punch. So these are my like, I want KPH 40s to win the world. Now I've got the balance cable. Now I've got the balance cable going into probably one of the best sounding portable, portable tubes I've ever heard. And I've, I'm including the original Woo Audio portable tubes that were like a brick. I'm pretty sure Jack Woo was holding that brick of a tube amp portable, one of the first things I ever reviewed from their company, and going, you know what? I want to make this smaller. He said he's been working on this for years. And despite all these weird quirks and what I would probably contain as issues, it does not affect the sound negatively. We are no longer ringing. I'm going to unpause. Bass enhancement, soundstage enhancement. Ch ch shit. This isn't even a well recorded song. Bob Marley is terribly recorded. Like, holy fuck. But I put it through this. I put these $40 headphones with $20 pads and a $40 wire on this thing, and you could absolutely end your audiophile journey. And it's like, it's like that guy that's living in a camper in the woods. And you walk up to the trailer and it's like, oh God, it smells. And there's like an outhouse with the door is broken. And then he pulls up in like an S-class Mercedes and gets out wearing rags. And it's like, no, no, no. It's like, this doesn't fit the lifestyle you could choose for this small little thing. It sounds so good. It's so immensely powerful. Like, all right, it's dumb. Do I gotta go get them? All right, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pause the video right now before the sun moves any goddamn further. And I'm gonna get the hardest to drive headphones in the face of the earth. If you don't know about the tungstens, they're coming. And I've got an older revision, which is actually harder to drive than what the production will be. In the meantime, I'm gonna put that down and, and burp. Now I have the broke back tungstens because I broke the back. Um, not for any other awesome movie reasons. Put that down. This is the actual cable. I didn't get to show you this one in the video that I made. Um, pause music. Switch to single ended. Unplug the co KPH quickly here. I'll see you. If you're going to hear a noise, you're going to hear it right now. Shh, shh. Maybe a little bit of a crickle. It's gonna be ringing. I don't hear any ringing. This, by the way, is the first time I'm using it on a computer. I tried this on this on my phone and it was just not powerful enough. But now here we are, raggedy edge. Zero dB. Let's change tracks. While not loud, absolutely acceptable. And this is coming off a laptop. So maybe if you had like a full end computer with higher voltage, it would just do more. The fact that it's running these at all and being a real tube, I'm not a hybrid, nothing that's like, I've run out of, I've run out of sun. We're gonna have to start rotating. Not a hybrid, it's a real tube. Doing real tube things. Doing real tube smoothness. Doing real tube, just 
delay, I don't want to say delay of sound, because that sounds like something's wrong. But to make soundstage happen, you have to fuck with things that are like phase. You have to absorb the sound, churn it up, and spit it back out in a way that is just pleasurable. And it's doing all of that. Like TA-26 or this, this in a heartbeat. I would almost take this as far as a sound profile over the Woo uh, Fireflies. I feel that the Fireflies are too clean. Maybe it's the tubes that are in there, I haven't swapped around, but this feels just more alive. A lame audiophile things. Oh my God, the music, it sounds so alive because of my blue tech has to move. It does. Everything I, I, I feel, this is almost so good that I feel like I can't test headphones with it, except for in this context. You know, I'm tuning a headphone. Okay, it sounds good when it's linear. Now let's wonk the fuck out of it. Let's give it this, which is like creamy, solid state. And let's give it this, which is like extra tubified, but not sloppy tube. There's a thing called sloppy tube. Do not search that. Um, that I've, I've heard before where a tube is just, I've modified the tubes to be on the 70s and they're kind of like misbalanced and you got to balance it this way. And it's like, whoa, it's doing broken things. This doesn't sound broken. This sounds high end. I didn't know that's a weird like, thing. What does high end sound like, Zeus? I can't put it to words. I would love to put it to words. If I could put, if I could put it to words, I'd make a fortune because I would request it. Like, hey, can you make these all sound high end? How he got all this stuff in here is just befuddles my mind. I want to point out one more thing though because this is important. When I have it hooked up to my phone, the phone that you're not supposed to use while walking around, you're supposed to get to a hotel room or go to your, your den, whatever fuck great room, whatever this is in front of your fireplace. And you're supposed to plug this into your laptop or a computer you've got out here and you're supposed to enjoy your fancy expensive headphones with it. I don't think it'll work on the computer itself. It totally fucking does. Holy shit. I complain a lot about like Bluetooth devices and how you play, pause, next track, raise, lower volume. This does it perfectly because Jack Wu is a human being that you can speak to and he understands problems. So I could literally pause. What if I double click? So I can't, see double, actually wait, wait, next track, hold on, see if I go, I'm controlling Windows volume with the buttons on this and then hold on, we're gonna see, I'm gonna hold it down. It changed tracks. Holy fuck, it did all the things it does on my phone. When you plug this in USB to your phone, it acts like I want every dongle DAC to act. Three buttons, play, pause, next track, last track, and volume control. Play, pause, next track, last track. Four things, it needs to do four operations, and it does them all. In fact, I even think it brings up the fucking assistant if you, do other, if you hold down the thing, which won't happen here. I can hold down the volume button and it will last and next track through windows or pause. Oh, I dropped it. Bit of a ring. See, that's the, that's the, mm, just, you can't drop it. This is fucking phenomenal. We're almost, we're almost done. This is fucking phenomenal in the way that it functions as far as the way it sounds the buttons the only thing you have the caveat is you're not carrying around a portable it is not designed to be banged around if you put it in your pocket and you turn around and it hits against a table it's going to ring for 60 seconds and it's going to ring loudly let's lower this again put it back to negative 28 i'm going to unplug this and i'm going to plug the cost back in you're good up here, right? If I just throw you all the way on top of this giant clip speaker box, nice. I'm gonna plug the cost back in without switching the switch because I need you to know. I need you to know what you're in for if you screw this up. I'm not gonna put these on my ears. I'm just gonna put them on the front of my head and I'm gonna plug this in. Don't fuck this up because you'll be in for this. Womp. Mwop. All I hear is Archer going mwop. Hard shocks will ring it. But once it settles down, 
it's fine. You don't bang it around, it's fine. Even when I had it in my pocket and I was using it illegally, it was fine until it wasn't fine, until I yanked it up or I'd unplugged and I plugged it, then you get the ringing. The EMI is also a huge problem for portability. Sitting at my desk in my room, it's, it's not a bad. If my laptop is far enough away, when it was plugged directly in, I heard it, 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 it. Now that it's like this far away, it's fine. If he hid the tubes, if these weren't visible through windows, number one, I would complain I couldn't see them, but I think it would probably have a better chance of blocking EMI. In fact, I wonder if he'd be willing to send, to sell plates that you could just like, I mean, I would adhere them with blue tack because I'm that guy, but something you could like clip around it to try to shield those a little more to prevent EMI. Because it sounds, it is the ideal, I'm an audiophile, I'm going somewhere, if, I'm going to UK Can Jam, right? It's coming up, August. Bring in this. I won't use it on the plane, I feel like tube amp on the plane is a little bit, you know, it's, it's kind of zeus actually. But when I get to the room, and I'm done listening to headphones, or, so, or, or even better, someone comes to my room, wherever the fuck that is, I haven't booked it yet, and is like, hey, I brought these headphones, I just got them a can jam, or I want you to hear this mon I've made. Do you have a tube amp to play it on? This is a tube amp to play it on. We're now, we're now in the pile of stuff over here. I really, I didn't want to go down to the desk and make this all sterile. This, this thing belongs here. It's active, it needs to go where you are and be used, all right? No one who has a fully set up desk in their office is gonna be like, you know, unless you're hyper minimalist, which is nothing wrong with being hyper minimalist, but unless you're hyper minimalist, you don't need something this small. The fact that I could put this laptop on my end table, climb into bed, usually completely naked, put this on my chest, put on my favorite headphones, or in this case, the Harmonic Dyne Aris that I'm tuning, and then just, with my eyes closed, next track, raise the volume, raise the volume, lower the volume. I could control everything with this. It doesn't, by the way, get hot. It doesn't get hot. The only time this had any heat to it was when I was walking around Wegmans shopping. <laughs> it, was, it was a sight to see, wearing headphones with this in my pants, and it was against my phone, my phone was hot, and it was getting hot in my pocket. Sitting here now, it's been on for 40 minutes, I, you, there's nothing to feel. I don't know how he's, he's done what he's done, using the real tubes, micro tubes, but real tubes, not new tubes, sucking just the gentlest of power. It can push way bigger headphones than you can imagine, even with just my cell phone. My Sony phone is, my, my Sony phone literally does this, 59% power, 58% power, 57, it's not that fast. I would say, realistically, I was pushing some heavy duty cans and my phone has pretty shit battery life. If I was on the phone doing things actively while listening to music with this plugged in, I was losing 1% a minute. That could be an option, that could be a problem. That's an optional problem. If you have a better phone than my Sony as far as battery life, maybe you lose 1% every two minutes, three minutes. If you shut off the screen and you're just listening, four minutes maybe, five minutes, 1%, then it's completely usable. But I literally plugged this into my phone, put on three songs totaling 10 minutes, and I looked and it went from 69% to 59%, and I went, oh God. But yet it somehow works on everything without like missing power. I mean, and it, here's the thing. I asked him, why does it have more power coming out of a PC? And he went, I don't know. It just seems to always coming out of a PC have more power, enough to push the Svara. Still not enough to completely push the uh, tungstens, at least not this revision, revision nine of the driver. The next revision will actually be like three or three and a half decibels more sensitive. And then this will be perfectly fine. Anyway, I'm done. This thing. This thing is far better than I had imagined it would be. And at the same time, far more quirky than I thought it would be. So, um, I don't even know what the colors are available. I love it in blue though. I love it in blue. I will I'm, have my wallpaper shuffling because it's just my laptop, but I will link to this and I'll link to these. If you do not own a set of these, for the love of God, Get it on your Christmas gift list. I don't even care if you buy my collab. My collab, by the way, is gonna be hilariously fun. But get these. If you are buying this, I highly recommend you read the instructions. 
Because, I mean, he sent me, like, a detailed email. He's like, all right, it's like the startup procedure for the Apollo 13. Like, look, you can't put on all the power at once. You're going to blow the circuit. What you got to do is you got to flip the switch. You got to take it off the thing. You got to plug the thing in, and then you got to turn it on. And you might even want to unplug it because it doesn't – if you've had it running for a while and you unplug it to do things and plug it back in, it's going to break your computer because it's going to be like, ah, where'd my thing go? But at the same time, it's not going to take as long to warm back up. Of course, it's already physically warmer inside. Um, yeah, I'm done. These rantings and ravings and all these things I'm doing, thank you for supporting me on Patreon and Subscribestar. See these reviews early. I know it's getting launched on the 27th of July, which is probably today. Hello. 27th of July. Um, I can't. And that's it. Support. Thanks to Jack for sending this out. He actually... Just, just keep an eye out, everybody, because the previous one, he sent me two. The first one accidentally got sent to my old address. And the guy who's living there, who I know, um, was like, yep, I didn't see it. So out there in the wild is a stolen tube mini, like a month before it was released to the public. So I don't know. I don't think they have serial numbers on them. If they did, it'd be cool to track down that serial number and see who the fuck took it off the steps of my old apartment. Um, anyway, I'm done here. You're done here. Wallpapers are in all the, all those wallpapers are probably in the wallpaper hoard, which is linked below. Again, patron subscribers to support this channel like you cannot believe. You just just heating this house is actually gotten a lot better thanks to the Pioneer Mini Split. See us link Pioneer Mini Split just because you can. I have a Pioneer Mini Split affiliate link if you want to use it because they're running the air conditioning right now. Um, bedroom, sunroom, and office are all running Pioneer Mini Splits, and the basement has a big 36K. Plus, my garage has two, but I paid for those in the garage because I really wanted to get air conditioning in my garage. Um, anyway, $5 a month. See reviews early, participate in yard sales, uh, hear all the losses and current sound demos, and yes, $10 a month, private behind the scenes Telegram chat where you could ask me questions directly. Those guys have been, sort of been hinted at this. There was sort of like a non-disclosure agreement, like don't show it off too much, don't give too many details. And in all of that hustle, I may have flashed it once or twice. I like flashing things. Um, but yeah, they've been asking questions and I have not answered them because this video has come around to answer them. What does it sound like? It's certainly the world's smallest, best tube, period. Uh, as far as swapping tubes, I don't think you can do that. Anyway, see you next time, or in two days, or in my other channels, Inner Fetish, or Z Unboxing, or Z Cooks, or Z Second Channel, and hopefully see you at uh, CanGM UK in London on the 19th and 20th of August. In the meantime, this video is probably way too long, and I'm actually getting kind of hot from the sun. Goodbye, sun. I do enjoy this. I miss the sun. I used to have those in my older views. They were kind of cool. <laughs>